there's no world, no traffic infraction, the punishment is death. Not a one. Never. So there's no reason why eight officers should choose to go and shoot him to death. I, I guess I, I just don't have a lot of sympathy in this particular case, although I do. You don't have a lot of other. sympathy in this case where uh, he was shot 60 times after, fl after leading the police on a high speed chase and returning fire. First of all, let me just say this. <laughs> the police. No, let's let's. Because too often media reports on what are police stories as though it is the ultimate truth. We spent no, a lot, I agree with that. Say, they, we spent a lot of time cutting Uvalde yeah. and realizing a lot of police lying happens, right? I talked about Ronald Green where the police said, oh, it was an auto accident. It turns out the police killed him. We see too many, too many discrepancies for us to consist consistently lean on what the police say is the truth. Absolutely. What we know I is agree. this boy, we've seen this on video. We know that he was shot at 100 times. 60 bullets hit him. He died. They riddled him with bullets and then they handcuffed his dead body. He was unarmed at the time of that. His gun was in the car. Police say, which has not yet been substantiated or corroborated, sure. they say they believe that one bullet might have come from the window. They say that. That's what they say. Their argument is maybe. Oh, right. Who knows if that's Exactly. True. Okay. But what I do know is that they shot this boy 60 times yeah. for a traffic infraction. I know that. Yeah. So. Anyway, again, shout out to friend of the show, Olaimiel Lauren, for bringing the heat to rising once again. And, and just to address the substance of that real quick, um, yeah, of course you shouldn't just take the cops' words for what happened. But even if we grant that he did fire at them a single round from his window. Even if we grant that and, and say, that's true, that's actually what happened. That doesn't excuse shooting a hundred rounds in return, uh, especially in like a populated civilian area out in the public. See, this is the problem with gun self-defense is that if you're in a public area, guess what? You don't always hit the target. You know, you can't just start shooting in self-defense in a public square, assuming it's going to hit the right person there's a very high chance it's going to hit some random bystander accidentally. This happens all the time with police where a stray bullet, you know, flies into someone's house and, and kills some poor kid or something like that. So again, even if, even if this dude had shot at the cops, um, that doesn't, that does not justify shooting a hundred rounds at him, 60 of which hit him again. Where did the other 40 go? Those easily could have hit civilian bystanders that had nothing to do with the situation. Again, you can't just start fucking firing bullets because one was shot at you uh that's creating more of a dangerous situation for the public than there was ever beforehand oh 100 yeah and there's a lot to unpack here one i think she does a great job of just shredding any of this like even as he recognizes or like rhetorically recognizes while he's speaking not like internally but like he'll be like oh of course the cops lie all the time we can't fucking we, we can't trust them until it's been verified and he's like i agree with you i agree with you i agree then he immediately goes back to just taking the cop's perspective he literally just said oh this guy led the police on a police chase so i think he should have been extrajudicially shot 60 times i don't have sympathy for him what the fuck is the matter with you do you realize what you just said to your audience of people as a news anchor you just said i don't care about this boy who was shot 60 fucking times because he sped in his car away from from officers what like we have to all grapple with that i think we all know what word that fucking suits is i don't care about that guy because he was a black guy right that's that's how i'm reading that situation but what how else do you not care that this person was shot 60 fucking times for speeding in their car they haven't been convicted of fucking shit else okay anyway uh that that's you know it, it's absolutely ridiculous but yeah again even if even if the cops are not lying and even if he did fire at them how is that creating a safer situation for them to shoot a hundred times in a public setting? Again, where do you, 60 bullets hit him. Where do you think the other 40 went? Those could have easily hit other civilian bystanders, killed them. Like that's creating a far, far more dangerous situation for the public than if they had just not intervened at all, which of course is always how it goes with police. Yeah. And that's, a, that's the other thing that I was going to say, I've fucking lost my train of thought for a second was it's the exact kind of argument that they make in the, obviously it's a satirical comedy, but the movie, the other guys that Adam McKay made, it's actually one of his first forays into like really political kind of talking points where he just makes these big jokes, obviously about the level of destruction that police reap on new york city just like do just supposedly catching bad guys but the like tr just travesty that they leave in their wake is you know fucking you know obviously hyperbolic in the sense but it's exactly what you're talking about gavin where oh maybe they heard a shot get fired from this car 
So we're going to shoot a hundred fucking bullets in just the middle of the fucking, you know, society that we've created. And like, we're the ones that are protecting you. So it's okay. We can all shoot whoever the fuck we want with impunity. Like, no, that is unacceptable. That is unacceptable by any metric. And as this whole thing kind of fed into Robbie, not sounding like a libertarian at all when it comes to that. And, you know, most libertarians abandon their principle immediately when it comes to the police, because why? Once you've accumulated a lot of uh, capital you want to uh, protect it and so the police we know are just an arm of the capitalist fucking stronghold right uh they they are there to protect that's why uh, they want to uh, privatize uh, the cops exactly of course they want knee breakers they want strike break i mean look at th throughout all of history the cops have always been the foot soldiers of the fucking capitalist uh the you know uh and, and that's that's what it is and it's because uh, libertarian economics uh, of a uh, you know anarcho capitalism or whatever the fuck you want to call it uh, it requires the protection of uh, your resources at the expense of other ones starving. So you have to have somebody to like, you know, keep those starving individuals in line to protect you and all of your riches. And uh, even consistent libertarians like Spike Cohen, uh, you know, who we've had on our show to debate, and he is a consistent libertarian. He wants to abolish the police. He wants to legalize all drugs. He doesn't want any kind of regulation of fucking anything. And I think that's crazy, but he's at least an honest guy and consistent, uh, you know. Uh, I'm sure part of his plan, if he ever gets rich, would be to hire a massive, massive private security uh, uh, group, which would be no better anyway. But, it, you know, it, it, it's still inconsistent with this idea that, like, the government is always bad to then be like, we need more police on the fucking ground that can act with impunity. Right. Also, uh, I like that you brought up the other guys. My favorite Will Ferrell comedy and easily my favorite Adam McKay movie. Fuck, don't look up. Uh, if you want to watch a good Adam McKay film, watch the other guys from... 2010 yeah 2010 with will ferrell and mark Wahlberg, hilarious movie michael keaton too you're right michael keaton is actually awesome in the film um it's really one of the most underrated comedies of like the 21st century if you ask me at least when it comes to like mainstream uh fair but yeah definitely check out the other guys that's a great that's a great recommendation yeah it was just but it, i and honestly it's a movie i haven't seen in a while i should probably watch it again but i just remember that like when i watched it i was i saw it in theaters with my sister i think you actually saw it in theaters with your sister too a little parallel existence right there uh but like in the back of my mind the like fucking destruction that the cops were doing and i'm like oh wow that was actually you know very very political but anyway i didn't want to answer this super that chat. didn't occur to me at all at the time i did not think about that political commentary at all <laughs> well it's still really funny if you didn't think about it at all and mark Wahlberg is it, it's again one of the few times where I like like Mark Wahlberg, but I, I like him any time that he's playing like a stupid fucking. That's because he's playing a dick. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. When he the Departed, same thing. Like you know, he's a fucking asshole. It works. 